Okay guys, this is day five of your Western expansion. Um, what I'd like you to do, I'm going to provide uh, split notes again on this Monday module. And you might have to go back and look at these previous presentations if you need to fill in those blanks. So today we're talking about the Transcontinental Railroad. And of course you bring, break down that word transcontinental and that means across the continent. In this case it's going to be from New York City all the way to Sacramento, California. Um, I'm going to upload a little video for you to look at and this is one in class. So what you need to know is the Union Pacific Railroad is the railroad's already been completed to Omaha, Nebraska and the Union Pacific Railroad is going to go from Omaha to a meeting point in Promontory Point, Utah. They're going to be paid by the mile and it's a race to see who can make it first, the ones going west or the ones coming east. That's the Central Pacific Railroad and they're coming from Sacramento, California to Promontory Point, Utah. So they're going to get a bonus. Whoever gets there first gets a bonus and they're paid by the mile. So who do you think? Union Pacific is going to have workers that used to be um, soldiers in the Civil War, ex-Union and Confederate soldiers. They're also going to have uh, separate segregated units with uh, former enslaved people and Irish immigrants. The immigrants and the uh, uh, black workers are going to be paid less than the other workers. And you can see there, there was some uh, conflict sometimes during the working day with this diverse group of people. The workers for the most part on the Central Pacific Railroad coming from California were Chinese and about 6,000 Chinese immigrants worked on the railroad moving from California to Promontory Point, Utah. Sorry, And they're going all the way to Promontory Point the Chinese Central, now this is the way I remember, this is the Pacific Ocean. So the Central Pacific, okay, starts at the Pacific Ocean, is going to the central part of the United States and they're going to meet here at Promontory Point. Now if you uh, realize how the terrain is, you have mostly flat terrain here, you get a little bumpy, but here you're going through a lot of mountainous areas. So it looks like it's a lot shorter, but it is a lot tougher to get through. So these are some of the difficulties they encountered. Think about this. This is mostly all done by hand. Uh, they did have TNT, but it was, you know, no technology, no steam shovels or anything. They are working with their hands in the weather. They're out in the weather. Uh, basically, they, as they're building the um, railroads, they're moving railroad cars and supplies along with the workers but it is sometimes hot, sometimes cold, rainy, dry, it is miserable working conditions. So the tools they worked with, so the tools they work with, dynamite, shovels, sledgehammers, hammers, pickaxes, uh, hard, hard work and um, they were all men working on this railroad. So this is a picture of Promontory Point, Utah on May 10, 1869 and you may have heard that they drove a golden spike in at this point in time and both sides uh, meet, the Central Pacific and the Union Pacific. There are uh, luminaries there, senators and uh, governors of the territory and the Chinese actually were given the privilege of setting that last spike. So this is just showing all the um, other lines that were built off this transcontinental railroad. Now you get north and south, you're getting a central, a, a northern route, you're getting a southern route. So um, this is in the 1880s. In a very short time you've got railroads going all across the nation. So what does this mean economically? This means that you are going to be shipping a whole lot of stuff across the country in a very short period of time. Where It used to take six months to go coast to coast, now it takes six days. So imagine uh, coal can be shipped quickly from the uh, western area, coal mines all the way to the east coast. Steel 
uh, we've got uh, uh, iron ore that's being or, uh, ored, that's being mined way up north and now it can be quickly taken to the steel mills in the south. Meat packing. Okay, this is gonna this is gonna revolutionize uh, cattle drives. So you have refrigerated cars, but what else does that mean? That means that things like uh, fruit and vegetables that people uh, didn't have access to. This is going to be an improve um, people's health and the whole idea of refrigerated, I mean, avocados that a uh, person in New York City never saw can come all the way from California. Uh, strawberries, lettuce, um, there's just, it, it's going to revolutionize uh, our, our eating habits, grain and lumber. So just um, think of all the different consequences of the transcontinental railroad. So now we're going to be talking about the various groups that settled the West. And they came in this order. The miners came first, then the cattlemen, then the farmers. And if you think about that, if you're a miner and you've heard about the gold that was discovered in California, what do you need? All you need is a pickaxe. Uh, sometimes they get, uh, you know, the uh, uh, for my, for in the streams, the big pans that they got, or uh, just very little. So this is um, mostly men, single men, that are going to go out west. Uh, the cattlemen, after the Civil War, there was a huge demand for beef. And there's going to be huge, huge herds, especially in the uh, Texas area. And they need people to move these cattle to the rail lines because they did not have the, uh, all, the, all the extensions at that time. So you're going to have a whole bunch of cowboys. A lot of, of formerly enslaved people are going to become cowboys. And remember, you had to be a little guy to be a cowboy. And then you have the farmers. And those are the families. And those are going to be the third group because uh, families, of course, require a lot more than these single guys. So remember the miners are going first in 1848. We talked about how Sutter's Mill in California, just outside of Sacramento, there was a large gold strike and people went by the hundreds of thousands. If you remember your reading, over 300,000 people ended up coming into California in just that first year, 1849, known as the 49. Okay, I'm going to also include uh, a video, a short video on mining that you can access after the presentation. So this is Sutter's Mill, California, 1848. You've read about, this is what it looked like um, about that time. And uh, now you can go and it's actually a park and you can still pan for gold, which is kind of fun. This is showing a guy, it's called placer mining, and gold is heavier than the, the dirt, and so the idea is to scoop up a whole bunch of stuff and let the water run through it, and then the gold will um, stay while the other stuff is washed away. This is a, a gold nugget. Now that's when they actually get into the mines looking for the, where, where is the source what, what, from coming down into the streams. And if you found a gold nugget about this size, um, you'd be a wealthy person. This is, um, if you ever go to uh, uh, Louisiana Coin over there by Brookshire's on Line Avenue, they've got some nuggets there. And this one probably maybe $100,000 or so. They are going to build uh, mines, and this is a mine that they built in Leadville, Colorado. And you can see they might have a little problem here because when they're building these, they just cut down everything. They're cutting down all the trees to build shelters and to get into the mines. And then come the heavy rains, and there were actual cases of houses and um, uh, outbuildings sliding down these hills because they had cut down all the trees. You can see an example of that here. You get a big, big rain and all you've got is mud and these things come tumbling down. 
You've heard of boom towns, okay? This is a boom town of Leadville, and you can see um, the the cigar here. They've got a gallery because cowboys love to take their pictures, and of course you're going to have a general store. Uh, this is the SA office, and that basically means you bring your gold dust in there, and they weigh it and uh, let you know how much they're going to give you for it. These are the Leadville miners. Okay, these guys are, uh, they probably stuck, truck, tried on their own and it was too difficult for them to make money. And then, so now they're in the mines. So uh, this, is, this is just a picture. You can see how they're dressed and um, they're getting paid probably by the week. They used to rent out beds, actually, and um, this is an example of probably because they work in shifts, and women were um, not not too many women in the old west. Okay, again, we're looking at Leadville. It was one of the larger mines, and the trains leaving with. Um, uh, I don't know, or or just people. You can see all these people standing around. I don't think they're loaded down with gold, but it looks like it there. This is um, showing mining in the Black Hills in North Dakota, and this is a different type of mining, and actually environmentally very, very, very bad because they pretty much just kind of throw any, everything in this trough and then release the water from maybe a stream or a river and it works under the same premise as uh, panning for gold. Uh, the gold would settle in the bottom here. Okay, I think this is on your split notes. The largest silver strike ever was found in Virginia City, Nevada. And this is uh, just, they go way deep for this silver that I, I don't think I would be a very good miner. I'm, I'm not real good with enclosed places. But notice the guys are all wearing hats. I think it's interesting how they dressed back in that time. So uh, the, to this day, I believe they're still pulling some silver from the Comstock load, but know that this is the largest silver strike. Uh, and I think at the time in the world, sorry, they do a lot of gambling here. And that is where the Comstock load was found, just kind of, there's Lake Tahoe. So if you're familiar with that area, kind of in the crook of that. So if you get a map coming up on one of the quizzes, you'll be able to identify where the Comstock load was found here so much but here in this picture because of the hats that they wore and they actually uh, when they were asked about the hats they said it kept them cool and it kind of makes sense you know if it rains then the, the rain comes off but because of the coolie hats which they used to wear in the rice fields they got that name of they would call the Chinese people coolies. You can see here that you have African Americans working on the mines, you had Chinese working in the mines, you had Irish immigrants working in the mines. Uh, sometimes these were segregated, sometimes not. And the uh, railroads, they pretty much kept them segregated uh, on, the, on the Union Pacific side, but you would see integrated, integrated work crews on the Central Pacific side.